And you thank God for your mama sometimes. Amen. Because without her, you wouldn't be here. Thank God for your mama. Some of y'all need to call them when you leave here. Amen. Don't you be at odds with your mama when, the, when, when Jesus Christ returns. Jesus come, you got a problem with your mama and your daddy. Amen. Like you don't make mistakes. That's the part I don't understand. Amen. You don't know what your mama went through. You don't know what your daddy went through. Oh, I don't know why I'm going there. But somebody need to hear it. You don't know what they went through. You think times are bad now? Times was bad back then too. I believe the racism and stuff that's happening now is fake. But back then it was real. Amen. Men and women getting beat down by society. You don't know how that affected them. Amen. So you pray for your mom and dad. Get a... Talk to them. Forgive them. Let them off the hook. Give them a chance. Amen. Because if you don't do that, you're going to get mad at me and find something about me you don't like. A bad family member is a what? A bad church member. I mean, you don't know how to love unconditionally. Amen. So you can't have a love for the brethren if you don't have a love for the folks that raised and birthed you. Amen. Took care of you when you were sick. Made sacrifices you'll never know about. Woo, that was for somebody, baby. I don't know who it was for. That was for somebody. Well, I sound like a real old preacher. That was for somebody, baby. I don't know who. <laughs> Sweetheart. Honey, honey lamb. That's them old preachers. <laughs> Beloved, yeah, that's beloved adamantbeliever.com so I did a message this is part two of sanctified place a sanctified place I did part one in Detroit so you gotta go watch that amen but that definitely stirred up some demons and um ah mama Liddy is here how you doing mama stand you stand up you gave birth to a whole Eddie. You stand up. Good to have you, mama. A whole Eddie. I don't know why I said that. Good to have you all the way from New York. Brooklyn. Praise God, mother. Praise God. Amen. Did she bring us stuff? You bring all your stuff? You going to stay? Okay. We'll work on that later. Amen. <laughs> Ain't nothing in New York, Jack. Amen. Good to have y'all. Good, I mean, good to have you here with your family. Amen. I know they're happy to have you. Amen. That's a blessing. Eddie's doing great, ain't he? God is blessing this brother. This brother committed to this ministry. He said God sent him here to help this ministry, to further the ministry and do what it did for him. He wanted to see it done for other people. God t has been taking care of this brother ever since. And I mean, Eddie is blessed. His family is blessed. Praise God. And he knows God has favored him because of what he does here. Man, thank you, man. That's, when you get that and when you understand that, that's a whole nother level right there. Amen. 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 And don't be covered in him because you ain't him. Amen. You don't have that Jamaican, Jamaica Avenue hustle like Eddie. So you ain't going to be able to do it. And he got a Jamaican next to him. <laughs> well, almost. A island. I mean, they know how to hustle. They doing their thing. And they doing it as a team. And God has just blessed them. Amen. It's okay if I highlight that. Don't you get jealous. Oh, you stupid. I don't have time for that. <laughs> well, where is my blessing? That's why you don't have it. Because you stupid. Stupid people don't get blessed. Just dumb. How you envious and you don't do nothing? How you envious and you don't know nothing? You won't pick up a book if somebody threw it at you. You pick it up closed and put it back. Make sure the pages don't come open. Amen. 
Amen. He's a hard worker. Amen. Hard work pays dividends. Amen. You sleep all day. Oh, where's my blessing? Man, I'm preaching. I don't care. Ooh, y'all know I, it's like a slingshot, man. I've been pulled back for a long time. A whole month. <laughs> Bing! You know, you let me go. It's just going to be old. I ain't got the title yet. Okay! A Sanctified Place Part 2. Look at somebody and say Focus Fellowship. In 20 and 22, we want to make sure that our church is focused. Amen? We want to make sure that the main thing is the is the main thing amen. amen and we want to make sure we drain in the pool and we're not fighting the alligators amen we gotta stay focused adamandbeliever.com forward slash focused fellowship dot p d f second corinthians four and one this is one of my favorite scriptures in the entire bible this is the backbone of ex ministries and pretty much everything I do in ministry, I believe this passage 4 and 1 through 8, it just it ministers and it speaks to me every time I read it. It spoke something different this past week when I was reading it and birthed this whole message. It just, it just speaks. The Bible is alive. Yeah. Amen? It's alive. Amen. It's alive and you need to pick it up and read it. Force yourself to read it. Well, I don't want to be reading out of habit. You better read out of something. You want to know what's going on right now? You better read the word. Amen. Second Corinthians 4 and 1. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we what? Faint. Now look somebody and say, You can't quit. You can't quit. You can't quit. Ooh, you can't quit. You're going to wait till the end times and quit? Can't quit. Amen. Good things come to those who keep what? Fighting. Mm -hmm. Keep fighting. And you know, there's no expiration on your prayer life. There's no expiration on your expectation. When did that start expiring? My brother, things just ain't working. Well, give it time. Just keep praying. I gave it time. What kind of time did you give it? If time is still going. The mercy that God has shown us should provoke us to do the ministry of our Lord Jesus. The mercy, look at somebody and say mercy. Mercy that God has shown us should provoke us to do ministry, do the ministry of our Lord Jesus. So the same mercy that God gave us. Did God forgive you of your sins? Yes. Does he still forgive you of your sins? Yes. That same mercy should provoke us to do the ministry of our Lord Jesus. 1 Timothy 1 and 16. How be it for this cause I obtained mercy, that in me first Jesus Christ might show forth what? All, All longsuffering for a pattern to them which should hereafter believe on him to life everlasting. What he's saying here is Paul claimed to be the greatest sinner of all sinners. He believed he was the greatest of all sinners because he persecuted God's people. He believed that the worst thing a person can do is persecute God's people. So he says the mercy that he received after doing that is the mercy that he preaches. Y'all not getting it. Yeah. So the very mercy we receive that God shows us and forgives us, that sets a pattern to them that will believe. We show them that same mercy. That makes us want to go out and show the mercy that God has shown to us. Amen. Now, if you stiff-necked and you think you're better than people, then you don't understand nothing Paul was preaching. 
Paul put himself below everyone and said he was the chiefest of sinners. But the mercy God showed him is the mercy he wants to show others. Yeah, every end time ministry should be about mercy and forgiveness. If we're preparing for Jesus to return, we need to be preaching mercy, grace, and forgiveness. Amen. Because you're going to need it. Look at somebody and say, you're going to need it. You're going to need it. The devil is waiting for you to thank you something. He's waiting for you to think you have beat him. And you're done with him. You're not done with the devil. What God has done for us should motivate us to reach the lost. And encourage one another. No matter the cost or risk. So just because we're in the end times and you comfortable in church don't mean you don't tell people about Jesus. Right. Ain't nobody trying to grow no church now. I ain't telling you to be a walking track or advertisement. <laughs> but you ought to be telling, still telling people about Jesus. Well, I show them with my lifestyle. Yeah, but you can tell them too. Amen. You can tell them too if they ask you. Now don't go to preaching on somebody else's platform. Amen. Don't be preaching on the Jack in the Box platform. That ain't what that mic is for. That mic is to take orders. You, you supposed to be talking to the person in the car. You put that little headphone mic on. Oh, oh what do you want? <laughs> Number four. You no, know, Jack in the Box got about a hundred numbers too. They have everything. Hamburgers and tacos. Is that a taco? Or is that a greasy pouch? Y'all eat them tacos? I'm not eating no taco where they fry the lettuce. They put, they put that whole taco in the deep fryer. The lettuce, tomatoes, everything is in it. <laughs> Look how Brian laughing. The way Brian laughs tells you a lot. <laughs> His laugh is revealing sometimes. <laughs> it's just a greasy pouch on that. The little, little pouch of meat with the lettuce, everything fried. Some stuff you just ought not to eat. Like Paul said, some things just ought not be so. You ought to look at that and say, you know what? This, this just can't be. The, the, this is not going to end well. <laughs> Frying the lettuce. When the lettuce get fried, that means they don't care. We don't have time to open it up and put the stuff in it. There's people in that line. <laughs> so don't put that headphone mic on and try to think you ready, for, <laughs> ready to preach. But you ought to be telling people about Jesus Amen. no matter the cost or risk I'm preparing y'all because the day is coming soon where it's going to cost you something to proclaim the gospel it's going to cost you something to stand on the word yeah yeah, COVID was just a rehearsal. They backing off of it now. You always know when they backing off stuff because they bring the racism back. It's racism time. It's racism. They have to just, nah, it's, you know, they have to use the racism for the next thing, which will be global warming. Then they're going to start blaming sicknesses on global warming. Hmm. It's all control. That's what it is. But what God has done for us should motivate us to begin to reach the lost. We need to start talking to people about Jesus. First Corinthians 9 and 22. To the weak became I as weak that I might gain the weak. I made all things to all men that I might by all means save some. So I, Paul said I became, I met people where they were so that I could help them out of their situation. I don't lord above people and think I'm better 
If I position myself that way, I can't help them. I got to give them hope of change by showing them the change that God made in me. Ooh, these hand claps. Let me move to the next bullet. For a saint of the most high to quit, retreat, or give up on the church is not possible. Talking to a dude from an online magazine, and he told me, he said, 4,000 preachers quit during the pandemic. Quit. So my question is, you know, I have a lot of questions for that. First of all, who hired you? How do you quit? Who hired you? And second of all, how are you going to get another job? When your former employee is not going to give you a good recommendation. Your former employer was God. can't get a job nowhere not on this earth so I'm trying to figure out what do you do and what were you doing who called you he told me 4,000 pastors that they know of have walked away from the faith and 20,000 churches have closed permanently Twenty thousand churches. You know, people tell me all the time. You know, they, I, man, I just don't know how you keep going and all that. Well, first of all, this is not mine. But this, this is not mine. So I don't have the option or the luxury to just decide I don't want to do it no more. Those that truly believe are called to fellowship and stand together. Not just virtually, but physically. What kind of soldier are you if you're standing virtually? You a digital soldier? Is World War III going to be digital? They deploying metaverse troops? Really? No, the fight is going to be physical. Amen. So the digital is just not going to work by itself. Can I keep preaching in here? <laughs> Hebrews 10 and 25, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is or as some are trying to do, but exhorting one another so much the more as ye see the day approaching. This puts something really, I mean, it, this puts just something on it when it says exhorting one another in the assembling of ourselves together. So we're coming together to exhort one another. I had a lady tell me the other day, an older lady, and she was saying how the faith, you know, she, she said, it's just different. She said, I used to just, my faith was so strong, I could just believe God for certain things, and I just felt this prayer, all of that. She said, but since they've shut the churches down and I can't go to church, she said, it's affecting how I believe. So my faith is wavering. I don't have the power that I had when I was with the saints of God. So that's why he said, don't forsake the assembly of ourselves together. Second Corinthians 4 and 2. But we have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully. Y'all, this is the backbone of everything. Man, I just did not want to be the preacher that hid stuff from the people 
and walked in craftiness to take advantage of people, get their money and all of that, handle the word of God that I can benefit and be better than everybody and keep forcing people to follow me. I just wasn't going to be that guy. Amen. I, I'm not going to handle God's word and twist it for my own benefit. Take what he's saying and manipulate folks to take their money. Pastor friend of mine was telling me the other day, where's Dr. Carter? He said, man, I ain't never heard you talk about money. He said, none of your platform, nothing. You ain't never came on there and talked about money and asked people for money. Amen. Amen. I haven't. Because I don't want to. Why should I? I don't want to handle the word like that. That leaves a bad taste in folks' mouth. It ain't enough to me to convince you you gonna drive what I get to drive because you gave me something. And I'm not doing that. I'm not comparing myself. We ain't taking no camera through my house and filming an episode of the G. Craig show. So y'all can see all that we, we I'm not, man. I never wanted to do that. Never believed in that. I never believed God would be pleased with that. Amen. Not walking in craftiness. Figuring out how I can handle the word so I can benefit. Flipping word here and there. Saying this and that. And, oh, leaving this out, but saying this. So I can benefit. No. But by manifestation of the truth. Commending ourselves to every man's conscience. What? In the sight of God. Ooh, that's a powerful scripture. So many preachers use money, fame, and prestige to prove their call. You know people are following people just because they're successful? Why are they really successful? They're successful in the world's eyes. They get followed because they drive a Bentley. I know preachers that drive Bentleys and can't even afford to get them fixed. Am I telling the truth, Elder Aaron? We could call some names right now. Asking the church, oh, we finna take up an offering because pastor's car is sitting on bricks. Well, first of all, you shouldn't have bought that Harlem Knights Bentley anyway. You knew it was out of warranty. That's the warranty. You know the 1995 model ain't going to run long. <laughs> Just so you can say you have one. What you got? I drive a Bentley. How old is it, brother? What does it use ethyl gas? <laughs> gotta wind it in the front. You just <laughs> you just want to say you got a bitly. <laughs> yeah. Oh, they want you to know what they driving. Remember, I went to meet with one preacher, man. I, I think I told his testimony. He couldn't even talk to me. He saw my car parked outside. He came up. <laughs> God said <laughs> that he's going to give to you even more than that. He's going to put it in. And I'm just sitting there with my headphones on just looking like, bruh, calm down. But he think if he prophesied on me, he going to get one. No, you're not. No, and he still don't have one. You ain't getting it. No, I speak that. I speak it right now. Nothing. I speak nothingness. I speak hopelessness. I, I speak. I speak. Let me stop. I block it in the name of Jesus. I block it like a Marvel superhero. Block just I, I, in Jesus' name, in the spirit realm. I block keys. I block access. I block all of it. You try to walk around and you're going to trip and fall. I block it all. Come talk to me, man. Say hi to me. Ask me how my wife is doing. I ain't seen you in 20 years. Why you looking at my car? 
No, you won't have one in Jesus' name. That's foolishness, man. Life is not about that. So many preachers, though, they use money and fame and prestige to prove their call. Let me hurry on, but oh, it's been a while. Y'all give me some time. Ain't no game today. Amen. This is the game. The game of life. <laughs> they cite grandiose blessings and accumulative finances as proof that God is with them. So they want to make the fact that they have money, God is with them. So you need to follow me because God has money, but all you did was get a bunch of folks to follow your foolishness and pay you. Then you want them same folks that think they're going to get it, but you, the one, got all of them given to you. How your church costs, I mean, your car costs more than your church. Parking lot got broken bottles and an old bum living in it. And you drive it around. <laughs> you drive it around in a Rolls Royce. We saw one preacher parked at the check cashing place in his Rolls Royce. I'm like, brother, you drive a Rolls Royce and you parked at the check cashing place? That car ain't made for that. It should have just went dead when you drove up. Wait a minute. Oh, no. Can't go there. Not in no Rolls Royce. Am I telling the truth? They don't know. That's a true story. Got a Rolls Royce cash in a... You don't have a bank account that's active? Yeah! More concerned about what they drive and how they live than the condition of the building. Letters in the sign outside just melted. Changed the name of your church. Your church was rock of the way. Now it's just ah of the eight. <laughs> Stuff just melted in the sign. You. <laughs> I know I'm in the house. And I'm telling the truth. First Timothy 6 and 10, it's the truth anyhow. For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, they have erred from the what? Faith, Faith and done what? Pissed themselves through many signs. That's why they want to quit, because the money's not coming in like it was. You want to quit because the money's not what it was? Why were you doing it? This is handling the word of God deceitfully. To suggest that we that what we have what they have, you will one day get if you sow into their wealth is the essence of walking in craftiness. Second Peter 2 and 1. But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you who were privately. Bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that brought them, and bringing upon themselves what? Swift destruction. That's why it broke down and you can't fix it. And some folks, you you planning on you planning on folks to come. So you getting a loan and all of that based on folks that ain't there? Oh, I'm moving in faith. No, that's not faith, brother. That's bad business. Bad business. You don't know who gonna come. I know somebody was building a church and I drove by that church. I told Elder, I don't know, I don't know who I told. I was telling somebody, I said, I don't know why they building this church, but this is the worst time to build that church. And guess what? That church is sitting there just a frame. That was seven, eight years ago. Oh, it was the elders I told that. 
I said, oh, they building a church around the corner. I said, man, this is the worst. I remember that. Other. I said, I said, oh, no. And I mean, there ain't no units up against that church. They have to keep fixing the glass because bums throwing stuff through it, through it. It's just an open shell. You better hear from God. And the worst part is you done, you done sold, you got everybody's money tied up in it. And you didn't hear from God? Yeah, that's why folks don't like, well, I hate to say this, why folks don't like church or come to church. That, that, this ain't why. So let me not even say that. Yeah. Amen. You'll find the church. Don't, don't, don't let nobody tell you that. God told me to stop saying that. That ain't why folk don't go to church. Folk don't go to church because they don't want to go. So they'll use stuff like this. See that right there? Holding up whiskey bottle. That See that? That's why I don't go to church. Now that whiskey is why. You got another spirit in you. Oh, unclean spirit. Principle of reaping and sowing should never be used as a con to fleece God's people for lavish lifestyles. Amen. Be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall what? He also reap. So you're not going to give somebody out of jail you're not gonna give your marriage good you're not gonna no it don't the bible said whatsoever a man soweth look at somebody say that that what is that whatsoever he soweth that's what he's gonna reap so yeah if you give god is gonna take care of you you're going to keep a job, whatever the case. I'm not saying that. You do need to give. And you give into the ministry that's feeding you. All of that's Bible. But folks, is taking it too far. The miracle spring water and the holy cloth. Oh, I rolled on all of these cloths and prayed for weeks. I rolled. I didn't even bathe. I just rolled and prayed. If you want a piece of it, we cutting it up. In each piece, you sow $33.33. And God is going to bless you. That's a con to fleece God's people. Second Peter 2 and 2. And many shall follow their pernicious ways. By reason of whom the way of truth shall be what? You messing up the way of truth with your foolishness. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which what? Believe not. Lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Our light, I mean our fight with the devil should be more than just battling our issues Poverty or the consequences of our sin. That's, right. That's all the church is focused on. Battling our issues. We do something stupid. We come to church. Lord, take stupid off me in Jesus' name. The whole church shouting over stupidness you did. Oh, the spirit of poverty broke in the name of Jesus. I speak broke. Broke off you. Broke off you. Broke off you. Broke off you. Bro. Speak of the Lord. I speak against the brokenness. Church. Would you speak a job and some courses? Speak some courses. I'll speak a course that you can take in, in Jesus' name. I'll speak a book you can read to better yourself. Amen. I'll speak the alphabets that you can learn. Man, why are you just... Uh, Man, that's what the church is about. I hit you. Oh, you know what I've been through, what they did to me. Oh, then what they did to me, but God said, I'm the head and not the tail. That's it. That's church now. Psychology. Poverty. Poor. Want to want, want have money. You coming to church to get in good with God to better your finances? Atheists have money. Oh, which doctor got a job? Yeah. He's selling bones and teeth. 
an old salamander legs. Now he making money. He going to hell, but he making money. He got nothing to do with church. <laughs> or we come to church because of the consequences of our sin. Because every Friday night, you go get some. Sunday, the altar's now open. <laughs> come on, move out the way. Let Deacon John come on up. He, let him come on up. Old Brother John, here he come. We know where you was Friday. Everybody saw Yo Fleetwood parked at the. <laughs> we saw the back of your bro ham. Still, you know it was sticking out. Because it's long. <laughs> yeah! Church can't always be about the consequence. Now, listen, we make mistakes, we make. But at some point. At some point, we should be battling for the church of God and the salvation of others. Look at somebody say, at some point. You can't fight for the church. The devil is trying to kill and destroy the church. He's trying to end the church. You can't fight for the church. Because every prayer you pray is about what you did. You can't pray for other people. The whole time you're on your knees, you confessing stuff you did. When you gonna outgrow that? Amen. Now everybody got their measure of grace. Everybody's been through their period of battling whatever they battling issue, whatever you went through. But at, look at somebody say at some point. At some point. You got to stop being a selfish soldier at some point. First John 3 and 16, hereby perceive we the love of God. Because he laid down his life for us, we ought to do what? He didn't say lay down our lives for ourselves. The gospel is hidden to this generation because believers are not shining the proper light to them. Romans 10 and 14, how then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? The world don't know. You taking it for granted that this generation knows what you know. Do you know what you know sitting under this ministry? You know a lot. You've been trained. You've been prepared. You've been ready for this time. But the average person, they don't know. I know I'm preaching. Darkness has overtaken our world and the only light that can save it is the light of Jesus Christ. Because we have the light, we must do what? Shine to others. John 8 and 12. Then spake Jesus again unto them saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall what? Not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. For we preach not our... God is tired of these preachers using that platform to talk about them, their accomplishments. Talk about what you got. Who you know? Who cares? Oh, yes, see, I just flew in from Zimbabwe and on the flight, you know, I, I, you know, I try to stay obscured, but the pilot saw me and said, where, where you going, prophet? And I said, man, I have a word for the folks in Indianapolis. And, uh, and so I've been going. <laughs> Nobody cares. I just want to get on the TV and say that. Nobody cares, bro. We don't care about your flight log. I don't care where you've been, who you know. 
Do you know Jesus? Yeah. Amen. I'm gonna spend 23 hours in the air flying somewhere. How much time you spend before the Lord? It's not about us, for we preach not ourselves, but Jesus Christ the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. That's what we are. We're servants for Jesus' sake. The Metaverse Church. Oh, they signing up to the preachers are signing. Well, this is heaven for a preacher. The Metaverse Church is heaven for a pastor. He put them glasses on. He don't have to deal with nobody. He don't have to deal with nobody. And here's the important thing. Nobody has to deal with him. They don't know his wife. They don't know what's going on in his house. They don't know what's going on with his children. They don't have to know nothing. You passed it by a phantom. Church should not be self-centered. This approach is the ploy of the metaverse and online services. Listen to what I'm saying now. The promotion of self without the balance of physical fellowship will cause people to struggle selfishly in their minds. Without physical fellowship, you're going to be in your own head. Which is, which is exactly what the devil wants. You ever been in your head? You know what's in there. That's the worst place. Hebrews 10 and 24. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to what? Good works. Consider one another. The consideration for a digital person can't be the same as a physical person. When a person is in front of you physically, there are certain things you would never say. Am I telling the truth, sis? But if they're digital, you'll say anything. Knowing that there is a great gulf fix <laughs> between you and them. So you can't get your tail whipped through the digital ramp. Oh, you all tough. When it's ones and zeros, <laughs> clicking and clacking, <laughs> typing on the side. <laughs> oh, you. Be but if they in person, <laughs> if they <laughs> but if they're in person, you're going to choose your words carefully because you're going to consider them and consider the beat down. Consider the future of this conversation. This conversation may lead to me getting scooped up and dunked down. It may lead to that. I see his fist balling up as I speak. I need to choose my words carefully. They don't want that. They don't want anyone accountable for what they say. They want to take that away. The looming threat of reprimand. They want to remove it. When we are denied fellowship, we are denied atmospheric moves of God and struggle to be fitly joined together. You don't think God works through atmospheres? You don't think God works, through, works differently through the gathering of people? You didn't read the Bible then. They could have had a better verse in the Bible if they wanted it. If it was effective. It's not in there. And nothing like it is in there. Because God made us to need the physical presence of others. He created us that way. There are chemicals that we uh, ex uh, not extract. What is it? Ex uh, excrete. There are chemicals when we are in each other's midst pheromones and all kinds of hormonal things happening when we're together physically it's important to God because he made us that way I did an experiment that experiment was about music well I, I put that experiment in the truth behind hip-hop part eight 
Lords of Discord. It was about music, but it, it works the same, where the, the guy had the rice, and he spoke to the rice and said certain things to the rice through the glass. And the things he said fermented the rice perfectly. It's that important. The audible voice with the physical frequencies. You don't ever miss folks. You miss people. You miss being around. Why do you think you miss your mama? Your dad, your children when they're gone. I miss my daughter and I FaceTime them. Her and I just like, and she'll look at me like, you don't want nothing, do you? No. I just want to look at y'all and plan when y'all coming. Because I need you here. This ain't going to work. I ain't no FaceTime ain't going to work. So when you coming? Amen. I, I just need you here. They come here, we'll do nothing. Sit around and look at each other. I just want you here. Can I preach in this place? When we deny fellowship, we are denied atmospheric moves of God and struggle to be fitly joined together. These are attributes of the church that the Holy Ghost created to give us physical love and encouragement. So the Holy Ghost knew that we would need physical love and encouragement. God knew we would need a hug from a loved one. He knew we would need a high five from a brother. These are attributes of the church that the Holy Ghost created to give us physical love and encouragement. Sometimes we just need to be encouraged. That's why folk hang around here after service till three. <laughs> folk just be outside running from group to group. I sit there for a while. Yeah, baby. Sit there. Yeah. Because you want the love and the encouragement in person. Ephesians 4 and 16. From whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplies, according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, maketh increase of the body unto the edification of itself in love. We are fitly joined together. You're not fitly joined digitally. You're not fitly joined digitally. That's not what it's talking about. The power of God operates through us for others. Oh, yeah, I can't miss that. If we cannot physically be with saints and loved ones, we cannot fully benefit them with the things the word commends us to do. Mark 16 and 18. They shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. You can't do that in the metaverse. They shall lay hands on the sick. Is that digitally? When I'm really sick, I don't need nobody laying hands on me through no computer. Amen. I don't need the lawnmower man praying for me. That's <laughs> so my age. Y'all don't know who that is. Young folks like, who is that? Nah, man. <laughs> Can I keep going in here? Yes. Summary! I said it better that time. Amen. The devil's plan is to end God's church. Y'all believe that? Yes. What else would the devil be trying to do if he's the devil? If he's the devil and he's mad at God, what else would he be trying to do? The devil is mad because he was rejected by God. And he can't ever go back. And when somebody's mad that they can't ever go back, their job is to tear it up. His job is to tear the kingdom of God up. Try to tear it down because he can't go back. When you can go back, you ain't going to tear it down. You're going to tear it down because you can't go back. So instead of the devil making something wrong with him, he got to make something wrong with the kingdom. That's what the devil does. 
So his plan is to end God's church. He desires to make us settle for online communication and selfish spiritual endeavors. So many pastors and preachers are enjoying the freedom without fellowship aspect of the digital realm. Freedom without fellowship. They're enjoying it. I don't have to deal with people. Aren't you called to the people? But a lot of them are so used to not talking or touching the folks. After service, bodyguards will break your wrist, you reach out and touch the pastor. After service, they just walk around. So like, hey, pastor, what's wrong? Oh, don't touch the man of God. Get away from him. Get away, get away. You won't touch him. Yeah. 20 members. 20 members and half of them your bodyguards. You got more armor bearers than you got men at your church. The whole men's department is armor bearers. Went to one church and a woman was the armor bearer. They didn't have no men. And she went to get my box of DVDs. I said, I get it. Oh, no, I got it. I'm the head armor bearer. I watch this church. Oh. Oof. Kind of burly. Buxom and butch. Carried that box like it wasn't nothing. You should have seen her legs bowed and everything. She was built for that. Body was just aerodynamically designed. I said, Lord, y'all don't have no men to pick the box up? Good gracious. Can't get a guy's down the street $20 to carry the box? You gonna let the woman tear her body up? She ain't having kids ever. If she keep lifting like that. Yeah, but they just big time in little churches. Big time. Got a headphone mic. And five people. See, saints of God. And turn me up, turn me up a little bit. Turn you up. Bruh. Ain't nobody in here. Speaker right next to him, but turn it up. You know it's a little house speaker. He got the little remote. And God, why y'all, man? Y'all, y'all ain't been, y'all ain't been where I've been. Y'all ain't seen it. Got that, you know that helicopter operator mic. Just ain't nobody in there, bro. You can take the mic off. Got a podium with lights and the, got a whole pulpit. Lights and big enough for somebody to be in it. Screens and ain't nobody. Bruh, you're overdoing it. Yeah. These are selfish spiritual endeavors. No accountability. They have no accountability. You don't bounce nothing off anybody. You know how nobody didn't call you and pull your coattail? And say, brother, don't say that. You shouldn't do that. You don't have nobody. No accountability. And they have MPD. Narcissistic personality disorders. No accountability. And narcissistic personality disorders have caused social media to be a breeding ground for deception and strong delusion. Texting, messaging, commenting, sharing, and liking are substitutes for physical interactions and not replacements. They're substitutes. So a lot of these dudes can't even Mac. They can't get a wife because they're trying to text all the time. Brother, you better pick that phone up and call and hear a voice. Invite them somewhere and meet. Texting and what you doing? You better go spend some money on her. Yeah. Eh, oh, see, they don't like that part. Spend some money, bro. That's show where your love is. The Bible said where your treasure is. Let's see you spend your money. Anybody can text. I'm getting texts from folk I don't know. Spam, text, and all that old junk. I, just, anybody can do that. Can you Mac in person? 
that I hear your voice. See you. Go pick her up. Trying to take the easy route. Witnessing to the loss through face-to-face -face exchanges. Touching and agreeing with the hopeless. And laying hands on the sick are all biblical mandates upon the true saints of God for the ministry of Jesus Christ. The digital domain was created to end these practices and cause despair and anxiety to flourish. Suicide rate up 600%. Miss USA killed herself. These media platforms cause people to follow virtual devils that they cannot discern and digital wolves that aren't among them physically. Yeah, it's too easy. It's too easy for the devil. Yeah, I just made it too easy. All of this is causing people to become super selfish and approach God for themselves always praying for themselves and never really considering the future of the lost. The church is truly losing its focus. We must not forsake God's church. We must not deny fellowship or settle for online ministry. Yeah. Folks all the way up Wednesday asking me, you going to have church Sunday? Brother, it's Wednesday! Yeah, but the weather might get Wednesday. When you gonna ask me Wednesday if we have in church? That tells me you already got your hunting suit ready for Sunday morning. You gonna be in the deer stand, going live on the phone. Wednesday. What y'all gonna do over there at ABC, y'all? Man, we gonna be. Man, we had church during the pandemic, bro. When wasn't nobody having church. We was in there with no mask on. Believe in God just like we believe in the day with the same folk. Ain't nobody dead. We defied all the rules and had church. Bro, you think we worried about some weather? Weather? I was up in Detroit. It was three degrees. That's the call where I just, like he was in a dune buggy. Nobody <laughs> stop in church. Well, brother, the weather might get the, the, the weather. There's some folk didn't come today because of old ice that was here Friday. <laughs> but it's Sunday, that ice is old. Old ice. We must not forsake God's church. We must not deny fellowship and settle for online ministry. Sure, don't get me wrong. A lot of y'all know EX ministries from the internet. A lot of y'all know from DVDs, all that. So don't get me wrong. Many are helped by the internet. The internet does have uses. But you can't settle for it. So sure, many are helped by the internet. But it is just a setup. That's why you can't. Fall for it because it's just a setup for them to have the power to pull the plug and in all mention of Jesus Christ. They do away with the physical church. Everything's on the metaverse. And then all they have to do is call China and ask them, how did y'all stop all mentions of Jesus Christ on the computers over there? Create a syntax program that'll look, seek, and block your account. Block your channel. And in all mention of Jesus Christ, gone with the flip of a switch. It's all a setup. But if we fight and stand together, we can see a powerful move of God in our physical realm that saves the lost and heals those that are ailing. It's up to us to take a stand. We must fight the good fight as we await the return of the Lord. Amen.
How many of you are going to fight the good fight? Hallelujah. Paul says, yes. we are troubled. Same passage. We are troubled on every side, yet what? Not distressed. We are perplexed. We may wonder what's going on, but we're what? Not in despair. Persecuted. Yeah, they coming after us. Yeah, they fighting us. Yeah, they talking about us. Yeah, they dogging us. We're persecuted, but guess what? We're not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Look at somebody and say, who are you? Say it, baby. Always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest. Listen, if you bear about the dying of the Lord Jesus in your body, you don't worry about what folks are doing. You could care less about what folks are doing if you are dead in Christ. If it's not about you and you are bearing the death of Christ in you, don't matter what they say. Don't matter what they say, Elder. They talk about you. You say, well, you can talk about me. But what about this word? What about the truth? What about the life? What about Jesus Christ? Well, brother, but you, it ain't about me. I'm bearing about the body, the dying, of, bearing about in the body, the dying of the Lord Jesus. For which we live are always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal flesh. So we die to ourselves so Jesus can live through us. And he lives through us so others can see and be one. Buy it. So then death worketh in us. You better learn how to let death work in you. What does that mean? That means dying of yourself. Who you trying to be in everybody's eyes. Worried about what folks think about you. You got to die to yourself. So that life can be in you. Amen. Everyone stand to your feet. Troubled on every side, but yet not distressed. We're going to have trouble. We're going to have hardships. Going to get hard, but we're not in despair. God is, look at somebody and say, God is with us. God, Y'all believe God is with you? Do you really believe he's with you? So this is a refocusing. Just get focused again. Let's get, let's get the spotlight off ourselves. Let's spend some time praying for some other folks. Let's spend some time sowing into some other folks. Let's spend some time witnessing the other folks. Let's get ourselves together so we can help somebody else get together. Let's be a real focused fellowship. Amen? Amen. If you want prayer for that, just come on. If that's you, I, I'm tired of talking about myself. I'm tired of coming up to this altar about myself. There are other people that God has brought in my dreams, brought into my life, brought into my thoughts. My own mother, my own father in some cases. And I'm still saying now lay me down to sleep. Worrying about myself. We're going to believe God that this selfishness leaves. And it's not intentional. It's habitual. It happens. Because you really want to make sure you're good. We all want to. But we can't focus on ourselves all the time. God is ready to mature you into a person that can help other people in this hour. Bring other people to the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Bring other people to the knowledge you have. Don't be stingy with it. There are people around you, people in your family that you're depriving of hope. And God is saying, no more. No more. It's time to branch out and help others. Amen. Everyone just bow your heads. Father God, thank you so much for this word today. Thank you for this congregation. All of these lovely people that trust what was being said and trust in you. 
We thank you, Lord. And God, I pray right now. And I pray and put myself with everyone else. I'm no better. I want the same thing. I want God to be able to not focus on myself as much and focus on other people. The needs of others, God. Those that you've given me dreams about. Those that you've brought in visions. Those that you've laid on my heart. Those whose names you've spoken to me. Those, Father God, that you bring in my thoughts. Father God, I don't want to just push that away and then start talking about what I need anymore. But God, I want to be able to pray for them on the spot. I want to be able to call them and text them. I want to be able to send them encouragement. I want to be able to make sure they're okay. Father God, I want that, Lord. So help us, God, to not be selfish in this hour. Help us to not make this about ourselves. Help us, Father God, to not constantly fall in situations where we got to always pray ourselves out of. But God, help us to be able to pray for someone else. That we will be a focused fellowship in this hour. Focus on what really matters. And that is your death, burial, and resurrection, what you did for us. The mercy you showed us, God. Help us to show that mercy to someone else. Come on, everyone, lift your hands. Now empower us with the power of your Holy Ghost, God. Empower us with the power, Father God, of your Spirit. Give us your power, Lord, so that we can reach others. Give us your power, Lord, so we can pray effective, focused prayers. Father God, so we can cast out devils in others. So we can speak against witchcraft in others. So we can speak against the devil's plan on others. So we can speak against, Father God, doubt and unbelief in others. Father God, give us your power and we'll stand for you in this hour. In the name that is above every name, we pray, Lord. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Come on, give God praise for what he's done. Give God praise for what he's done. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God has called us to be encouragers in this hour, admonishers, builders in this hour, fishermen in this hour. We're supposed to help save those in this world that are lost. So God, use us all to your mighty glory. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Come on, hug somebody and say, God's going to use you to pull someone out of the fire. Come on, hug somebody else and say, God's going to use you to pull someone out of the fire. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is so good. He's so good. He's so good. Hallelujah. Lord, I'm available to you. Y'all know the words.
on and give God some praise. Hallelujah. If you're available to him, give him some praise. God, I'm available. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 